lesson where we are looking at algebraic addition and subtraction okay so addition and subtraction in general I think is grade one even maybe preschool term, um, ideas that you definitely understand and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it but I do want you to understand just something very basic and that is that if I want to add things together if I want to add things together they have to be of the same kind okay if I want to add things together, they must be of the same kind. So a very basic and simple example might be if I have a chair. Okay, it doesn't matter what that chair looks like. Um, I've got two chairs. Okay, and if I want to add to that ch chairs two other chairs, okay. Uh, well, let's make it three other chairs. Uh, a chair that looks like this, and a chair that looks like that. I hope that looks like a chair, more or less, at least to you. And a chair that looks like that. Okay, so here we have uh, two chairs, and then we have three more chairs, which means in the end we have five chairs. Now, to represent five chairs, instead of drawing five chairs, what I'm rather going to do is draw one chair and just a five in front of that so that is going to mean I've got five chairs so this number right in front here is called the coefficient okay I call it the coefficient I can't remember how to spell coefficient I think it's two years coefficient and we it, it tells me how many of the objects I have the things that I'm adding together I've got five of them so in essence I've got chair plus chair plus chair plus chair plus chair okay so I've got five chairs which means uh, I'm actually that five coefficient means I'm adding the chairs five times okay so that's just the one idea now what I can't do is if I have let's say two chairs one chair I've got two chairs and I want to add to those two chairs three tables Okay, I'm sure that doesn't really look like a table to you, but uh, I'm trying. Okay, there's my uh, two tables, and let's make another table. As long as it's just tables. Okay, so I've got, there's my, my tables. I want to add to these two chairs three tables. What do I have? Okay, do I have five table chairs? What will a table chair look like? Something like this. Okay. Do I have five table chairs? No, I, I, I can't add chairs and tables together when they're not of the same kind. Okay, so what I have in the end is I've got three, uh, sorry, not three, two. I've got two chairs and I have five, sorry, not five, three, three tables. Okay. That's what I have. I can't add them together. It's not five anything. It is two chairs and three tables. And that's it. So this cannot be added together. Okay, so we've already looked at, at this idea just now that we can only add things together if they're of the same kind. And instead of drawing out pictures like that, we'll rather just use uh, one picture and write in front of it a coefficient which represents how many of those there are. Okay, now, let's say for argument's sake, instead of adding something as simple as uh, chairs and tables, let's add sheep together, okay? But if I talk about sheep and I draw my little sheep picture here, okay, so there's my sheep, okay, I hope it looks like a little sheep to you, okay? This sheep actually re represents a whole herd of sheep, and let's say this is there for actually 100 um, sheep okay this is not just one sheep one picture represents 100 sheep so if I say I've got five and then a picture of sheep it actually means I've got five herds of a hundred which means it's actually five 100 sheep Okay, it's actually five 100 sheep. Now, what that means is that I've got five herds with 100 each. So I've got 
a hundred sheep plus a hundred sheep plus a hundred sheep plus a hundred sheep plus one more a hundred sheep there is that's how many sheep I have um, and this totals 500 so I've got 500 sheep okay what I'm trying to illustrate to you is that this coefficient coefficient actually has a multiplying uh, operation between its uh, we're going to call this later on the base okay so this is actually five times 100 sheep and it makes sense I'm adding a hundred five times so that's why we, we write it like that so that's the one thing I want you to understand just before we go on and the next thing is what happens if I'm actually adding things that cannot be added together for example Okay, if two things are not the same, they can't be added together. One example would be is if I have two rands. Okay, I'll use a different kind of a brighter. If I have two rands, okay, that means I've got two coins each worth one rand. I've got two rands. Now, when it comes to money, instead of writing it like two coins of one rand, okay, we are going to write it. Uh, we write money uh, with the uh, the base in front so the coefficient is actually at the back that's odd and it's not always the case but that's how we write rands at least okay and we want to add to two rand 50 cents like 50 cents again is the other way around so we have 50 and cents so these little um, small coins each worth one cent each okay we've got 50 of them now rands and cents are two different things so this is not 50 it's not equal to that's a sign for not equal to it's not equal to 52 rand cents for example I mean that's just ridiculous but we all know that it is actually 2 rand 50 okay. we know that we understand it 52 rand and 50 cents is 2 rand 50 and if we take away the rands we can actually see oh this is two and a half we would read this if it wasn't talking about money as two comma five or two and a half rand in this case so how are we able to add things that are not the same well what we do is that we know that one rand is equivalent to this is the sign for equivalent to a hundred cents that's how we define one rand is a hundred cents okay so if I want to add two things that are not alike together what I'll have to do is it I can only add them if it's possible to change the one into the other so for example I can ask myself the question how many cents do I have if I have two rand or how many rands do I have if I have 50 cents now let's look at both okay and um, first let's change rands into cents if I have two rand how many cents do I have well if one rand is 100 cents then obviously two rand is 200 cents I'm saying obviously I hope you agree with me that that's quite obvious okay I just multiply both sides with a 2 okay which means that this question can be changed I can have 2 rand plus 50 cents I can change it into 200 cents plus 50 cents which will give me now I can add them together 200 cents plus 50 cents will give me a total of 250 cents so notice how I add things together that are alike I simply add their coefficients together coefficients tell me how many there are if I have two groups then I count the coefficients for both and add them together okay so that is if I change it into rands sorry cents what would I do if I changed it into rands and that's obviously how we know that this is two rand fifty is we know that fifty cents is half a rand okay how do we know that well a hundred cents is a whole rand okay which means fifty cents fifty cents would be equivalent to half of one and a half of one in decimal numbers is zero comma five so what I have is two rand plus fifty cents is actually equal to two rand plus and instead of fifty cents we say it's 0, 0,5 rands, okay, half a rand. 
and that means adding them together remember now the coefficients written at the back and it doesn't really matter where the coefficient is the coefficient tells me simply how many of the unit do we have and in this case we have 2 and 0 comma 5 gives me 2 comma um, 5 rands and uh, since we're working with number we just add an extra zero so there's two digits after the comma but that's unnecessary okay so that is how I do algebraic addition and that subtraction is exactly the same or the only difference when it comes to subtraction is we actually use just subtract the things we can only subtract things that are the same and uh, we can only so let's say we have 10 men okay so there's 10 guys in it so there's a group of 10 guys that's kind of what this represents and now five guys leave the group so I can represent it like this so 10 people minus five people leaves me with five people left okay so the final thing I'll add to this is that in algebra in algebra we are going to use variables and the variables can also be known as unknowns that's funny they're known as unknowns okay there are unknown values so for example here we had an example of an unknown value there I had one sheep but it represented a hundred sheep now if I didn't tell you it represented a hundred sheep but it represents some number of sheep um, you would not know but it would be a variable it would be one little sheep uh, representing his whole herd and you don't know how many is in the herd okay so and instead of just drawing pictures we're just going to make it easy for ourselves and use letters like a b c x y z any oh, let me draw my z but it doesn't look like a three any variable that you can think of can represent and and even maybe symbols we sometimes you Greek letters like alpha and theta and beta um, and even stars or crosses and things like that they can all represent variables or unknown values so each unknown value represents a different time of type of thing so if I want to add variables like 3a plus 2a is equal it means I've got three a's and I have two A's added to that, so I actually have in total five A's. Now, A represents some number. We don't know what number it represents. It's an unknown variable, or a value. A variable means it can take on different values. For any value A, this will be true. Let's, let's use an example. Let's say A was the number two. Then we have three times two plus five times two. Okay, multiplying is I'm using these brackets to multiply so I've got three twos sorry plus not five twos plus two twos I've got three twos plus two twos so in total I have five twos make sense okay now how many is three twos three twos is six two twos is four how many is six and four six and four together is ten but 10 is the same as 5 twos because 5 twos gives me 10. Okay, so here's just an illustration of that this is true. And you, you can do this for any value that you substitute in for A, even negative values, you'll get the same answer on both sides. Okay, but let me leave it at that. Um, I think in the next video we'll look at the commutative property of variables. In other words, the property that, oh, sorry, of addition. The property that when I'm adding things, it doesn't matter in which order I add. That's the commutative property. Up next.